Usually I don't have problem with heights, but when I was standing alone on Brycastle and, and I looked down, I felt that my stomach is shrinking. <laughs> if you're interested only in the hike itself and you want to skip over our experiences in Norway before we got there, you can click on this timestamp. So the story starts on our first night in Norway when I had a problem, actually two. My mattress that I have used without problems for 10 years has deflated under me. So my first problem was what to do in order not to freeze and the second one was how will I sleep in the following two weeks which we will spend in Norway. We were still on the southern part of the country so the temperatures were relatively high but we were going to travel more and more to the north. So for the first problem I took from the car that uh, foil which uh, you use against the sun and I slept on that and the uh, deflated mat it was kind of okay. In the meanwhile I was thinking about what to do because I have to sleep somehow in the following two weeks. My idea was to go and buy a new mattress <laughs> when I was thinking about oh my god how expensive that will be. I was already thinking about okay how long will our money last still I had to try so I looked up on my phone some sport shops but uh, there wasn't any nearby so we had to make a detour almost all the way to the city of Stavanger on our way there we also stopped to fuel and uh, of course the price of the fuel is also quite high in Norway. The gasoline was 1.6 euros per liter or 1.9 US dollars per liter. I wanted to make this point in the story to have an excuse to show you the amazing location where the gas station was located at. So after that we went into a smaller sports shop called G Sport which had some mattresses but there was none which I really liked. I was thinking to myself that if I pay a lot of money anyway at least let's find a mattress that I will use in the long term. So after that we had to go almost all the way inside Stavanger somewhere near the airport into a shop called XXL. Yes shops have quite funny names there. This uh, XXL shop is uh, built somehow similar to IKEA so you have to go through all the shop before you can go out and of course for a gear junkie like myself it was like being in heaven so I had to concentrate to go to the mattresses because uh, that's why we came for. In the end I found a, a suitable mattress and bought it. But before getting to the trailhead we still had to take a ferry and we had no idea what to expect because uh, this was a ferry inside the country. We didn't know how much will it cost, do we have to reserve beforehand, where do we pay, it was the timetable so we had no idea. We were hoping that it will be not as expensive as the big ferry we used coming from Denmark. So we arrived in the village of Lauvik. Of course the views were already amazing. I will uh, put some videos here so you can see. There was some kind of big parking spot where you could uh, queue up to go into the ferry and uh, by the time we got there uh, the cars were already moving in so we didn't have to wait. We went directly on the ferry. Nobody asked anything so we just waited. At one point somebody came with a POS so we could pay in cash or with a credit card. The price of the ferry wasn't that high about 8 euros or 10 US dollars. The ferry ride was about 15 or 20 minutes. The views were amazing uh, there as well. There was also a bathroom so really good conditions there. So we arrived at the parking which was quite expensive by our standards. For the few hours for which you took the hike you had to pay around 20 euros or 25 US dollars. But at least there was uh, also a nice bathroom where we could refill our water so we said to ourselves that at least the water is also in the price. By the time we got to the parking it was already 8.30 pm. It's not as dark as in uh, our region in uh, Europe because it's more to the north but still if we wanted to see something we had to walk quite quickly. The hike itself is 3.8 kilometers long and the elevation gain is 350 meters so it's quite steep if you do the math and the time you usually need is 4 hours both ways because we wanted to see 
something before it was getting dark. We went almost running and it took us one hour and 20 minutes to get there. We didn't stop almost at all, just in a single viewpoint spot, which is uh, after about 15 to 20 minutes after starting, coming out of the forest. It's a really nice viewpoint because you can see the water and uh, some small islands because the sun was setting and the sunset uh, in the north is much longer than in the rest of Europe so the golden hour is really beautiful. I will put here some pictures so you can check it out for yourself. The trail is well marked with a red T letter or at least that's what it looks like. There is really no danger of getting lost. From what I've read it was uh, rebuilt in uh, 2013 by some Nepalese Sherpas because before that the trail was quite narrow narrow so traffic jams were forming. At one point we had to go over a really muddy portion for several hundred meters but there was a bridge so you could go over that easily. After that we arrived to a nice lake where people were also camping so this is not only a place for hiking but also for backpacking. Also in that area there were some signs to other destinations. After a steep climb we were already getting close to the destination. It was in a more exposed place with some rock balconies and uh, some chains for security which had locks on it which reminded us of uh, our hometown Cluj which also has a bridge like this with uh, locks uh, left by lovers. Prykastolen is one of the most popular hiking destinations in Norway. Hundreds of thousands of tourists visit it yearly. We had only a few hundred meters before reaching it when I saw for the first time in my life a sign prohibiting the use of drones. Actually it makes total sense in a place with such big crowds and with winds which are quite unpredictable. In the future I would like to see similar signs appearing in Transylvania as well in some locations. In a period when it seems like every hiking YouTuber uses a drone and everybody wants to make Craig Adams style videos, I think a lot about this subject because I believe that this trend can be a dangerous one so I will surely talk about it in the future as well. So we finally reached Pajkestolen and it was about 10 p.m. in the evening. There were just a few people there and after a minute or two only a couple remained which was taking photos so we were waiting uh, for them to finish but uh, it was just not ending. I think uh, they took like 100 photos and they were still taking photos. We were uh, getting closer and closer so they could notice that uh, we also want to make photos. That's how our photos were made on Prykestolen and uh, that's how I was all alone by myself there as you can see in the photos which I will show you. After the photo session and uh, some rest it was already dark so we had to go all the way back using our headlamps. It was past midnight when we got back to the car. I had this uh, genius idea to drive back on a different way compared to the one we came on because it was already quite late and we were quite tired. I was thinking of going back using another ferry which would take us all the way through the fjord close to the place where the Kjerag hike is which is also a really famous hike in Norway. So that's uh, what we tried to do at least. We took a left turn at one point and crossed the interesting bridge and arrived in the village of Forshan. But here it was dark and uh, nobody was there so I found the signs and found out that uh, this is just a tourist ferry so it goes just a few times during the day. And also it's quite expensive around 80 euros or 95 US dollars. So after finding this out we had to take the same way back to the tent as the one we came on so we drive back to the village of Oanes. But here we we were also the only car. It was already 1.30 in the night. Turns out that we were lucky 
because there was still one ferry at 2 a.m. and the next one would have been at 6. So we only had to wait half an hour, then we could drive on. But the problems didn't stop here. When we were getting close to our tent, we were stopped because of roadworks. They were repairing the road during the night. The guy told me that we have to wait at least two hours before we can pass this portion, which was just a few kilometers long. So I asked him if there is another way. He said yes, we could go around through the town of Vikesa. So we did that and went around like 30-40 kilometers for just a few kilometers of portion which we had to avoid. So by the time we get back to the tent it was already getting light outside. If you want to know if hiking in Norway or Transylvania is better, you will find out from this video. And if you're interested in our whole itinerary in Norway, you will find all the details here.